Hey YouTube, this is Polo just for paintball, and I'm here to give you guys a quick review. Review of what? A review of the Pulse RDR. Okay. And it's a little bit less a review and a little more of a question of why this loader didn't take off and you know why isn't this popular doing as well as it looked like when it first came out. So, let's get to that. So, here it is guys. Pulse RDR. As you can see here, it looks really good. Styling is great. Shape, pretty much the same as any other loader. Size is bigger than a rotor. But uh, I'd probably say it's about the size of a VMAX. Fairly low profile, pretty much as low as they can make it. And a bit on the heavy side, but just about, say, a little bit heavier than a rotor. But just a touch. Uh, you see here, the lid works great. Very large opening. I don't have the speed feed on here. Uh, I bought this used and it didn't come with it. And yeah, pretty much here's the screen. Yes, that's how loud it is. Really loud. Okay. I have the chronograph on there. Okay. Chronograph is great. Okay. Feed neck. Some people say this breaks a lot. Uh it hasn't broken them in yet, obviously. But uh, there's a point that I want to get to before and later on the video about the feed neck. Uh, let's take a look at the inside. Uh, the best, absolutely best feature about this loader is this. This is the best feature about this loader. The fact that you can pull out the entire tray with a simple push of a button is the best thing I've ever seen. Honestly, if the rotor had this, if the spire had this, you know, it really, you know, you know huge plus for me. Uh, you know, that's part of the reason why, you know, I bought it. You know, there's a lot of great features about this thing, and I was really curious about it. Uh, let's take a look at the drive terrain a little bit. See here, it's a little bit of an old school cone with a raceway right there. So it's kind of like, uh, reminds me of a Halo setup. Cone's a little bit smaller, a touch smaller than a Halo, but there you go. See there? And some people might be wondering why it's called a Pulse. That's why it's called the Pulse. Because it literally pulses, you know. And I think it's very smart. Uh, you might be wondering why it pulses. Pretty much to unjam itself, uh, theoretically, I guess. Um, when you think about it, if there's not a constant pressure on the balls and it actually backs out slightly and pushes forward, it's technically unjamming itself automatically. So it's, it's kind of agitating um, while it's on the, it's on the, it's waiting to be shot again. So uh, it kind of prevents jams, which is great. Uh, never had a, a legitimate paintball jam in this thing, um, but you know, I will get to that later on again. Uh, so, uh, the, pad the paddles here are do bend. They're a little bit soft, which is good. Um, get that again. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff I'm going to get to in the end. Don't worry. Uh, here's the back part. Paintballs come out of there. There's the chrono at the front. That's what reads the speed of the paintballs coming out. And obviously the back. Okay. This just let me just show you the inside of the shell. Regular stuff. Nothing too impressive in there. Just stick it back in there. There's definitely plenty of plenty of room to stick your hand in there and just um clean it up, you know, in case you know, you're playing in the rain or whatever. But um yeah. So it feeds I wanna say around fifteen balls a second. Definitely not more than that. Um, there are times I feel like it's less, uh, you know, 
I don't know why. Uh, I would say 12 to 15. And that's one of the biggest downfalls of this thing is you know, I'm going to I'm going to get mentioned in a minute, but inconsistencies in general is the biggest downfall of this loader. So it feeds great. I used it a, a couple times and it fed great when it, you know, when it's working perfectly and I had no issues. I didn't have to worry about it. I love have I love having the chrono right here. Um I don't need to see it, but it does tell me like, oh, you know, the what like I'm out in the cold, it's affecting my shots. You know, it's dipping down a little low. Uh, you know, there was times I was shooting, you know, I was, went on the field with 280, ended up shooting 260 by towards the end of the game and you know it, it sort of helps you to understand why your your paintballs aren't going where it's supposed to go especially when you're in the woods and you can't really see how far your 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 paintballs are going you know, like you're shooting 260 you're like oh okay I can't hit it from this distance you know I have to move up a little more you know and, and, it, and it helps you know it's kind of cool too so is that cool factor to it? Um, there's also a shot counter, you know, so it tells you how much paintballs go through the loader, not necessarily how much you've shot. So, say if you transfer it over to a different gun, it's not gonna, you know, reset itself. You have to turn it off, leave it off for a little bit, and then turn it back on to reset it. Um, uh, also has a BPS counter. Uh, I found it that very inconsistent. Uh, the readings are all over the place sometimes and I believe it's because it's there should be a certain cap to how many shots are fired and that's where it reads so it's say over 10 shots it's reading how the rate of fire um, but if you take three shots it's not gonna read properly if you take more than 10 shots it's inconsistent um, I have my my DM14 was set to 10.3 I believe so you can you know you can see 11 maybe 12 you know just give or take one or two but I've seen it go up to like 20 26 randomly you know just do it by itself and you know, I find it very inconsistent so the the the, um, the rate of fire thing I don't really go on but uh, the FPS is is very accurate I, I did test it out in a chronograph at the field um, virtue clock I've tested it out and it's, it's actually matches up pretty well uh, some people say the the chronograph is not accurate they do the barrel test they take out the you know they shorten their they take um, their two piece and they take off the tip and the chronograph is off yes obviously it's gonna be off yeah, I mean it's chronograph you know I, I don't think they understand that the position they the GI designed this loader to read for a certain distance so the sensor is reading paintballs over here if you're in the barrel it's it's not gonna read it properly so it's gonna throw the readings off and the same thing with any chronograph if you if, the, if this is your barrel oh, I found cr my daughter's crayon here so if this is your barrel and you you, you have the virtual clock and you chronograph here directly straight and then you know you chronograph back here at an angle it's not gonna come out the same it's just it's just not and you know that it, it happens a lot with on a chronographs and you know that's why like the ones at the field even the virtual clock have a little notch on them to show you where to put the barrel to help you out to give it you know, keep it consistent with other things. So you're not like putting it on the side, you're putting it upside down. You know, keep it consistent, keep it the same. You're gonna get just about the same reading. So, the chronograph is accurate, so don't worry about that. Uh, one thing I want to mention about that is don't go home and use this to go by if you're gonna, you know, play at a field, an event, a tournament. Don't go by this reading, okay? Um, I don't want you guys to think that this is the end all meet all of chronographs. This is the most accurate thing. No, it's not. Um, and every chronograph is different. So, say you're home the night before chronographing 280, 280, 280. Perfect. You're ready to go. Okay, tomorrow 
chronograph 280 in the morning, you know, right before you go to play. You go on the field, you play, you play the tournament. You win a point at the end of the chronograph, you're shooting three, 300, 310. Okay, so don't go by this, you know. It's it's more of a accuracy meaning, so you can tell how fast you're shooting ball for ball. Okay, different chronographs will chronograph differently. So the virtual clock will chronograph the field the field chrono. So that's what I'm saying. Uh, don't go by this. Go for the field chrono. This is purely for tuning. You know, try to get your consistently even. You know, at a around the FPS that the field shoots at. So, you know, and, you know, just don't go by it, you know, it's not perfect, nothing is. So, yep, that's what I have to say about that. So that's good. I love the chronograph. I love the feature on this thing with the chronograph. So, before I get more into it, let me go over the negatives of the shell itself, uh, the looks in general. Um, the great part here, I like the color. I like that this is a different color, but this is rubber. This is a rubber coating. Pretty much, if if I wanted to, I can pretty much scrape this off. Uh, I don't like that. Um, I mean, obviously anything, if you really try, will scratch. But the fact that this is rubber, it kind of, it, it doesn't feel very protected. Um, like my, my rotor is hydro dipped and it feels great no worries about it you know um, I've had rotors in the past with with the the red coating on it bought it red felt great no issues I can lay it down on the floor and not worried about it but this I'm a little worried uh, though it looks good not doesn't seem like the best the shell itself has seams you can see the seams here where they mended the two plastic together. You can see it here. You can see it there. A little square there. Over the logo. Okay. There's some parts that don't match up like here. Right here. Okay. If you see here, there's a lip where the bottom tray doesn't line up with the shell you see here this part doesn't really attach all that well okay. so I mean overall there's a ton of stuff here that just looks half-assed and uh, cheap looking and not something I expect from a $250 loader okay yeah, it, just to put it next to a rotor or a spire, <laughs> no, no contest with the shell. Um, though I haven't had an issue with the shell breaking at all, um, but that's not something I'm complaining about. I'm just complaining about the quality of the work and the ship and how it's put together. And overall, it's not great. It's not great. Uh, the best part is the the screen. You know, the screen is very well made. The buttons here are very well made. Uh, Obviously, the I mentioned the tray is great. Okay, that I, I feel like they focused on that, and the rest of the stuff kind of fell to the side. Um, the lid is great. I like the lid, but the shell just you know fell short. I I don't know if it was created in a different department or what, but you know it doesn't line up together and all that stuff. It it's just you know overall not the best. Um, so this feed neck or collar or whatever you want to call this thing you notice how it's so thin well one of the issues I found was that not necessarily that it's thin it's fine that it's thin um, I haven't had any issues with it breaking but the fact that the inner diameter is so big so the issue I was getting was that when I use extremely small paintballs, maybe mainly like in the 280s, um, I'm, sorry, I'm like in the in the 80s and below around around that point, they would jam. 
meaning the the balls would instead of falling straight up and down it would fall this way okay and one of the one of the other issues with this loader is it has too much torque so added with the too much torque and the paintballs going sideways it pretty much gonna try to jam your jam your gun so that's one of my complaints that's one of the reasons why it it would jam um, and it has you know partially done that before um, it like it would like hiccup almost uh, that's why I said it doesn't really stay at 15 balls a second it kind of like fluctuates a lot and it's very overall inconsistent in that way and that's one of the reasons why I believe so another thing is I went over the FPS already in the everything like that so I said it, it has a lot of torque this thing has a crazy amount of torque initially so let me turn it on let me show you you see it took my finger all the way around and get it spinning again and I am literally trying to stop these paddles from taking my finger okay get it going in okay so it's like a crazy amount of torque way too much for for paintballs and I have had brakes about brakes on it and I'll show you a picture on it right now see there so so that's that's one of the biggest issues with this thing and there's a couple of things leading to that uh, one of them being that the paddles and turn this off real quick the paddles are extremely thin let me show you see them there paddles are extremely thin meaning that the applied pressure on the paintballs are focused on one spot which is bad bad idea because then as you as you saw in the picture pretty much cracked the shell you know and fed it into my gun and that's just horrible and I was I was wondering why I thought it was my gun chopping because it was cold outside but it wasn't it was the loader feeding broken paint into my gun so that was bad <laughs> that was a bad time so that's one of the things that ruined this loader um, another reason why it's really bad is the electronics electronics are horrible in this thing and I'm not saying the options I'm not saying the stuff it can do what I'm saying is that if you play with the chronograph on and all the settings on this won't last you the batteries won't last you one whole game it won't last you two games it'll cut out on you in the second game and that's horrible and I can see like you know there's some settings to turn off the the screen um, how much is that gonna save you can you can shut off the chronograph but that's really what you bought it for so is the point of this loader if you can't have the chronograph on there right so regardless you bought this loader okay I have to play with the thing shut off that most even if you double it what's gonna last four games if that three games maybe that's horrible that the battery life is horrible electronics is horrible another thing is it's not properly regulated so if say you put fresh batteries in here this thing will spin like a hot rod <laughs> like seriously this thing will take your finger out you know and that that's part of the reason why it broke my paint those paintballs that I showed you is that it was one fresh batteries and this thing was spinning like crazy the torque was so strong it just shattered anything I tried to shoot out of it so and then you know once it starts running low it starts jamming even though the battery is not completely dead so you know it really cuts the life of the loader sh way short way short um, the batteries not are not even completely dead to the point where you can't the loader won't turn on no the battery reading will still say 
yellow or red and it'll just start jamming and what's really funny is they have a battery reading here and you, it's really fun watching it go from green red yellow orange you know it just goes back and forth like crazy and that's part of the thing is that you know, the electronics are, is not properly regulated um, it's all over the place um, I don't know because you know all the options it has maybe it has too much you know options in it but honestly without the chronograph this loader is not worth it uh, with you know take out the chronograph you know they do op they do have an option to just buy the loader itself not worth it at all I'd rather have a V Max, honestly. And it's sad because I really like this thing. I really like how it looks. I really like how it's put together. It has so much potential, but it falls short by so many things. You know, the paddle, the electronics, you know, the feed neck is too big. You know, inconsistencies all over the place. You know, it, it's not the best looking loader. You know, there's, you know, you have the spire, you have the rotor. You know, there's no competition, and, and for charging 250 to 280 for it, no way. And I bought this thing $100 used, and that was the most I would be willing to pay for it. Um, right now, I mean, I bought this thing for tuning pur purposes. My personal chronograph broke, and you know, it's definitely helping me out with chronographing. You know, my DM when I need to tune it and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's, it's definitely has a lot of perks, but way too many negatives to play on a field. Um, I wouldn't be, you know, I wouldn't feel comfortable going on the field with this thing on a regular basis. Just having to worry about if it's going to break paint or not, or if it's going to die on me halfway in the game, which it has before. So, I mean, yeah. So that's my review guys, I mean, there's not really much else to say. I love and hate this thing at the same time. Uh, I definitely don't think it's not it's not worth buying new. Um, used, I would say 100 or less, 80 even, just for the chronograph. I wouldn't even use this thing on a field anymore. Um, it was nice, but you know, after experiencing it with fresh batteries, no no more um, yeah and that's pretty much it guys so thank you for watching this video hope you guys liked it again comment like subscribe and hopefully I have more videos coming up for you guys so thank you guys for watching this is the pulse already are